Hi, I'm Brian Heidelberger, partner with the law firm of Wynn. <laughs> I'm sorry, Loeb and Loeb here in Chicago, here today with another mini advertising law lesson. Today's law lesson, blockchain, what the heck is it? But yes, first, it's true, I've moved my practice after 25 years to Loeb and Loeb along with my partners, Rob Newman, Nikki Bargov, and our colleagues, Caroline Hudson, Mary Bassey, Ryan Martin, Stephanie Weiss, Jenny Savitt, Emma McGovern, Idara Udofia, <laughs> Oh yeah, and Chris Ekdahl, we've moved our team, and why? Well, if you ask the managing partner of Loeb & Loeb, Ken Florin, he said to me, if you have the opportunity to create the dominance of the 85 Bears or the 90s Chicago Bulls or even the Chicago Cubs of today, you do it. Uh, all right, it's true, he didn't say those, he said the New York Yankees, but the point is, remains the same. So what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about blockchain all the kids are talking about how does it apply to you well I've been lucky enough to come to Loeb and Loeb and we've got real experts in that here we've got Steve Hashitino and Amir Azaran and they're gonna help us explain today what it is and why it matters so Steve Hashitino one of the co-leaders of our blockchain gang tell us what is blockchain and please be gentle a blockchain is a distributed database of verified transactions. Think of it as a large spreadsheet running simultaneously on thousands of computers across the globe, with everyone having access to it, but that information being securely encoded at the same time. Every time an update is made to the ledger, all can see it, and no one has the ability to change what is encoded. Amir Azaran, one of our other co-leaders of our blockchain gang, Amir, Tell us, why are we hearing so much about blockchain these days? The key insight as to why blockchain is so important is that by virtue of having a database spread out among participants that all participants can see in real time and which is immutable, creates a level of transparency among those participants and that in turn leads to a level of trust in an ecosystem where trust wouldn't have existed before. So Amir, tell us, how are companies thinking about using blockchain in the advertising and media space? The main way companies are exploring use of blockchain in advertising and media is with respect to real-time bidding and programmatic buying environments. By creating a, a distributed ledger that's transparent to all participants, blockchain can address some of the issues inherent in digital ad delivery, such as uh, viewing by bots and other non-human interactions and uh, click from. So Steve, is your practice only seeing the use of blockchain in advertising and media? No. Right now the number one blockchain use case is cryptocurrencies, uh, with there being approximately 1,500 as of the start of the year. Um, there's a lot of activity in that space, but we're also seeing a lot of activity in things like supply chain management, manufacturing, retail, finance, real estate. So Amir, what are some of the key watchouts when counseling clients in the blockchain space? Well, it's important to realize there's two main types of blockchain. The first is public blockchain, which is Bitcoin and other cryptocurrency open to the public. The other uh, is permission blockchain, which is limited to a discrete set of participants that are authorized to be on that network. And it's with permission blockchain that I think companies will derive real value, especially in advertising and media. Now the key thing to watch out for in a permission blockchain environment is that the participants need to agree on a robust governance framework because uh, of the need to manage uh, IT security and the deployment of smart contracts or other automated functions on the blockchain and so forth. All that will require a very detailed governance framework as to the, how the participants will manage that blockchain network. Steve, I've heard about smart contracts. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is? A so-called smart contract is not either a contract or particularly smart. Think of it as an application sitting on a blockchain that is designed to be triggered under certain set circumstances. Those circumstances would be set forth in a contract. So sadly for all who are listening, lawyers will still be needed. Steve, what about other key technologies that your practice group is seeing now or that may be on the horizon? We see the development of blockchain technology as part of a broader trend of seamless connectivity. For example, in my area, payments technology, we see a lot of interest in connected devices and other mobile platforms. Blockchain promises to increase the speed of transactions while reducing the cost 
and potentially removing the need for trusted intermediaries. So thank you, Stephen Amir, for all that great information on blockchain. And until next time, let's be careful out there.